Care Life, and I'm kind of getting the right number. Okay. Hello, and welcome to the presentation on Fort Hayes State University, located in Hayes, Kansas, in the United States. We're pleased that you can join us this morning so we can have just a casual conversation about Fort Hayes State University and why we think you as an international student should come and join us on our campus. My name is Carol Sokolala and I'm Director of International Student Services here at Fort Hayes and I will let the rest of the people on the table introduce themselves and then we'll start our program. Hi everyone, my name is Vivi Lai. I'm from China and right now I'm the Communication Specialist in the Office of Strategic Partnerships. I also graduated from the Communication Department at Fort Hayes. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night to all the people who are watching us all over the world. My name is Mehran Shahidi. I am the Director of English as a Second Language at the beautiful campus of Fort Hayes State University in Hayes, Kansas. Hello, I am Karen McCullough, and I'm the Assistant Director of International Student Services here at Fort Hayes State. So one of the first questions you might ask is, where is Fort Hayes State University? Again, uh, it's located in Hayes, Kansas, which is in the center of Kansas, which Kansas is in the center of the United States, or what we like to call the Midwest. Um, Hayes is a small community of roughly 20,000. It is a very safe and friendly community and one that is very welcoming to international students and students from diverse backgrounds. The weather and climate in Hayes and in Kansas, we have four seasons. Currently we are in the winter months, so the temperature is cold. Um, we do get snow, but we have a beautiful springtime uh, we have a summer that has uh, a temperature that can climb into the 90 and 100 degree Fahrenheit uh, uh, category. And in the fall, we have, again, a pleasant temperatures with uh, beautiful foliage that turns in the fall seasons. And then that brings us back to the winter months, which again, we do experience cold and snow. Um, but again, we feel very fortunate in Kansas that we experience all four seasons because we know students who come to us may not come from climates where they have ever experienced snow. Um, one of the things we also like to say about Kansas is um, that the weather changes very quickly. So the weather, um, you can experience maybe four seasons in a day uh, depending on how the weather changes. So um, Kansas is a very beautiful and unpredictable climate, but one we think you will find very welcoming. I agree because um, I chose for a taste because, uh, just because we didn't have snow in my hometown and I'm from the Southeast China. Um, we only have rain in winter. So when I saw the snow in haze, I was pretty excited. <laughs> Mm, for I know for most international students, it takes a long time for you to um, come from your country to afford haste. Like for example, for me, uh, for me, I usually like take twenty hours to fly from my hometown to haste. It's a long flight, um, a little bit exhausted. But when you see the beautiful campus and you see those nice people in Fort Hayes, you will feel, okay, it's awesome. It's totally worth the long flight. <laughs> One thing about the location of Hayes, we are located again in the center of the state. Most students will um, travel to Hayes via Denver or Denver International Airport. There is a uh, commuter flight that does fly from Denver to Hayes which is about an hour flight. And so um, it is convenient for, for students to access an international airport from our uh, regional airport here in Hayes. So uh, again, we feel very fortunate that um, students can access us. And also being centrally located, we are within four to five hours again from Denver, Colorado, which allows students if they want to experience the mountains to go and ski or to Kansas City, which again allows them to go to a larger shopping area, it's about four hours, or Wichita, Kansas, which is the largest city in Kansas, and it's about three hours from Hayes. So 
So again, very easy day drives to those respective um, larger cities if students choose to want to explore more of the Kansas area. You may be wondering how many international students we have at Fort Hayes. We have over 400 international students on campus studying as ESL students, as undergraduate students, or graduate students. Our largest country group is from China, which Vivi was a part of. I'm very proud of that. We also have a large group from Saudi Arabia, and uh, Korea is another large country group. We do have over 35 countries that are represented at Fort Hayes. So we feel like we have a really good um, mix and diversity on our campus. We do have admission requirements for each of those populations, the ESL um, admission requirements, undergraduate, and then graduate. The best um, advice would be to go to our website to get the different details about our admission requirements, but we do generally, we require an application for each of those three populations. There is a $50 application fee to apply for admission to the university. We're also going to require your transcripts, your uh, high school diploma. Um, if you're transferring credit, it may need to be evaluated by Wes. We'll also need a financial statement to prove that you have funds to study at the university. How about my talking about a little bit about the English as a second language program at Fort Hayes? Yes, sure. Uh, this program started back in 2007, and we started with two students. Wow. And now, in fall, we had about more than 120 students, and in spring, we have 75 students from different countries, as Carol mentioned, uh, China, Korea, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Turkey, Togo, and Mexico. These are the population that we have now in the ESL program. Classes start from A1 level, which is the elementary level that we have. Uh, students with no knowledge of English, they come to our program, and after nine months, if they work hard, I would like to mention this point. The program that we have is a challenging one. Students should get themselves ready to be able to sit in academic classes and listen to people, which professors from, we have professors from different parts, from China, we have professors from Togo, and we have professors, most of our professors are Americans, but you've got to listen to all different accents and be able to understand and do the academic work. Uh, we at Fort Hayes State University and the ESL program, we try to emphasize the importance of listening, speaking, uh, writing. You've got to be able to write uh, English academically to be able to uh, be accepted for your professors to advance you to the next level of academic work. So writing size, reading ability should be in a format that you can read lots of uh, pieces in different books and different journals of our library to be able to uh, match with the uh, requirements of each course in that four days. Then we have got the grammar and vocabulary preparation. The grammar in the last two levels, which is B1 and B2, before uh, you get into uh, admission, be, being admitted, if you don't have any TOEFL, if you don't have any IELTS, the requirements for TOEFL and IELTS are different. You can, just, you can check it out in our website. It's all there, 61 in uh, uh, TOEFL and 5.5 uh, in IELTS for uh, undergraduate students and 79 and 6.5 in IELTS for graduate students. But the students who do not have any uh, language proficiency, they can start ESL program after they are being tested. They can be in different levels and if they have good level of English, they can finish in uh, two months, four months, and the maximum is going to be one year of English uh, uh, 
training, which you got at least about 20 hours a week of face-to-face -face interaction with the students. We've got, in the evenings, we have tutors uh, that uh, are mostly in graduate, graduate students, graduate school, they are in either in uh, doing the graduate work that they have got their graduate degree at Fort Hayes, and they've got some uh, teaching or tutoring experience. They tutor our students, so it's a very full program. Next to that, uh, we have got some social activities that our program is, uh, is sponsoring. Next to the uh, social activities that Carol's office is uh, uh, in charge of, we have got our own, and we are done. This program works very close with uh, Carol's office, international office, in making you uh, happy at Fort Hayes State University academic-wise and uh, socially to be involved I uh, want you to be involved with the uh, American students as much as possible with different programs that I'm going to turn it on back to uh, Carol who can talk about the social activities we have on campus that we have got different programs in uh, for, for Tiger programs that Carol is going to talk about Yes. One thing I would like to mention in regards to the ESL program is the class sizes are small. So again, the students get a lot of attention from the teachers, which is very important as um, students are learning the language. And so I think the personal, yes. the personal touch and the small class size really makes the program unique, as well as the outside um, ability to interact with um, American students. There are about uh, on campus 4,700 students who were enrolled at Fort Hayes. So with 400 international students we have a lot of American or domestic students that international students have the opportunity to interact with. And again our campus has over a hundred different student organizations that students can join and we encourage obviously international students to do that because it allows them to meet American students, it allows them to work on English, but it also allows students to develop leadership skills, um, team working skills, and the ability to experience American culture. So when you graduate, you can put a resume together that an employer can look at and say, this student not only studied at Fort Hayes State, they got a degree, they were involved, and they learned some very good personal skills that hopefully they can bring to my company or business. Some of the activities that students can take part in, um, we have what is called an Encore Series, which brings Broadway productions, if you're interested in the arts, to campus. Um, we have intercollegiate athletics. We have basketball, volleyball, soccer, American football, um, softball, baseball, that all students, as part of their enrollment, get into for free doesn't cost them to go to athletic events. So again, it's another great way to uh, get involved on campus. We believe that we know you are a student first, but students need to have balance in their life. So um, we don't want students to be, become overly stressed. So we want them to take time to go to our wellness center, which is a fitness center on campus that again is free for students. It has weights. It has um, treadmills. It has different ways that you can take care of yourself personally and health-wise. Um, we have a swimming pool that students can swim at. Again, all these things are free. Uh, there is what's called our activities board, and they bring comedians. They bring movies. They bring all kinds of different activities for students to take part in. We have what's called intramurals. Um, so for students who maybe are not athletic enough to be on one of our sport teams, you can participate in what we call intramural events, which allows you to play a sport, maybe badminton, maybe tennis, maybe basketball, against not only international students, but American students. And again, even if you are not athletic, they have a lot of activities that are craft related, um, they have cooking contests, so they have something for everyone. 
if they don't have an activity that you see and you would like them to maybe um, coordinate. Um, every office on campus, intramurals, the activities board, is willing to help you to, um, to find that activity and to bring it to students on campus. Because we really want students to feel like Fort Hayes is their home away from home and that they are part of the Tiger family. So again, we understand students are here to study, but we believe that students need to have other activities to feel a part of the campus community and also the Hayes community so you have a balance in your life. And that way you're not studying all the time, but you have a balance and you, you are healthy mentally, physically, and spiritually. So, Vivi, do you want to talk about some of the things you've been involved in? Yeah, um, as an international student, I really had a great <coughs> time at Fort Hayes. Um, as Kara said, um, well, first, for academic life, um, most of my classes were really small, like we had 20-ish students in the class, and I had classmates from America, from South Korea, from Vietnam, uh, from Turkey. It's really exciting because you can learn different cultures from your classmates, and professors are super nice. You, you can ask them whenever you have questions, and they have office hour to offer help. I still remember um, when I took the class for American government, something like that, I knew nothing about American government. So I was just freaked out when I got the assignment, and I didn't understand. I went to my professor's office and asked for help, and he and his colleague just stayed in the office and on a piece of paper, they draw all the relations between different um, offices and departments. So that helped me a lot. We had lots of really nice professors and amazing classmates at Fort Hayes that can make your academic life more wonderful. And uh, for the those music program or basketball game, football games. It's free for students. You can just show your Tiger ID um, to uh, to go to those programs. It's awesome. Can give you good time um, besides those homeworks. Um, I usually go to wellness center or the swimming pool to do exercise. Mm, yeah, the entire university just like a family. They take really good care of us. As a good of this is a mentioned family, I would like to say, this is a family school. So we all help each other. So the children who are coming to the parents, they really feel comfortable. You're gonna you're gonna find your second parents at Fort State University, no matter which office you go to, from international office, English second language, even the strategic partnership that we have or different departments, they really feel very close to you. And because the school, we, are, we don't have, we're not a very huge school with 25, 30 <laughs> buildings, we are all close together. And I have witnessed uh, the time that my students, they call me in the evening after the office hours and they want help and I try to help them sometimes I ask them to come to my office and I go to the office too and after six seven and they have the problems we solve their problems and they feel themselves very comfortable when it gets to the problem of their they may have some health problem we have a good health center here at Fort Hayes that I want Carol to take it from here about the importance of health center and how caring the people in that office Yes, we, we do have what we call a student health center that's located on campus. All international students are required to have health insurance, um, which may be different depending on the country where you are. Um, students individually purchase American health insurance. And it's very important because if you get sick in the United States, it can be very expensive. America has a extremely um, good and advanced healthcare system, probably one of the best in the world. But again, it, it does cost money to utilize it. 
which is why students have health insurance. But we like to encourage the students to go to our health center on campus because, again, as a student, it is more affordable to go to the health center than it may be to go off campus to a doctor. So the health center uh, operates during the week from Monday to Friday, 8 until 4.30. They have uh, nurses. They have what are called nurse practitioners who work under the assistance of a doctor. And then we have a doctor who comes in for several hours a week. So again, um, students utilize the health center. If they need to be referred off campus to a medical doctor or a facility, we have a, a wonderful hospital locally. Um, and they can, can make that transition to the healthcare in the community much easier. The nurses are all very friendly. They work uh, because they're trained to work with students. Um, they are very uh, compassionate and they will explain everything to the students. They understand sometimes language is a barrier, so they have what's called a, um, a translation, translation line. So if a student comes in and they're having difficulty with explaining their symptoms, they can call a translator on the phone and the translator works with the student and the healthcare provider to provide the best health care to the student so that they understand what the health care provider is providing for them and the health care provider really understands what the student needs in regards to their illness or sickness. Again, we feel that's a very good service for students and again, um, much more affordable to use the health center. If a student does need to um, seek medical care outside of the office hours. Again, we do have a hospital locally that students can go to if it is an emergency. And oftentimes, the, once students do that, they may have questions about the billing for the services. Again, the international office and the student health center office is more than happy to help students to figure out the American healthcare system. Because again, we, we understand that it may be confusing for students because they feel like, I have insurance, why do I still have to pay some fees? So again, navigating that system sometimes takes some help. And that's what, what our offices are here to do, is to help students to understand maybe a process that they're not familiar with. Um, there are a number of other offices on campus um, or services that are here to help students. One of them is our, what we call it's the Kelly Center. It's a uh, counseling center. And they do um, counseling for students if maybe they're homesick, um, maybe they're having problems with their roommates, um, maybe they're dealing with a very stressful situation that they want to talk to someone about. Those services are free and confidential for, for students. Um, we have a drug and alcohol program where again, um, if students get in trouble in the community um, with, with alcohol, because in the United States there are very strict rules with drinking and where you can drink, and sometimes students do get in trouble, and um, this office can help them with some of those issues. The age of drinking. Right. The age of drinking in the United States is 21 years of age. So again, for some students who come, they may come from a very different background where they can drink at a much earlier age. So again, the international office through orientation, and we'll talk a little bit about that, really tries to help students understand in their new home what are the things they need to know to help them avoid getting into trouble. Because sometimes if a student makes a mistake, it equates to having to pay. So there's usually a fee associated with making a mistake. And we want to try to inform students how to avoid making mistakes that may cost them some money. Um, Carol, I think you, put in, you want to talk about the seminar, freshman seminar classes. Yeah, and orientation. Yeah. I, I will let Karen talk about our orientation because, again, we really feel like it's important for students you know, they're excited to come to campus, but there's a lot of information that we feel new students need to know to help them adjust to campus. So Karen puts together a very extensive orientation 
uh, that you can experience once you come to campus to answer some of the questions and help navigate how to be at home here. Well, like Carol explained, we have an orientation on campus that um, will help uh, acclimate you to campus and also to the community of Hayes. We will help you complete the items necessary for you to be a student for the get you ready for the first day of class. We'll help you get your student ID card. We'll visit the Student Health Center, which Carol has talked about. Uh, get you established there so they have your health information on file. So when you need to use the Student Health Center, you can go and be seen there. All international students will have to take a TB test, <coughs> so we will schedule a time to do that during orientation. We'll help you if you're living on campus to complete your housing contract if you don't do that before you come to campus. We'll also have you meet with your faculty and your advisor to help you pick classes for the semester. We'll take you on a tour of campus, take a tour of the library, we'll tour the wellness center and the pool, which Carol spoke of earlier. We will also go out into the community. We can uh, take a tour of the Hayes Airport. We'll drive around so that you can see where the hospital is, the movie theater, where Walmart is, some of the places that you will be visiting um, once you live in Hayes. We also have a language screening, which May Wong would like to talk about that later. That's part of orientation. We require all international students to do that, so that will be part of orientation as well. And then, um, because we have so much information to give you, we can't uh, give all of it to you in the week or two before classes start, then we do teach an orientation class that is free for you. Uh, we just meet a couple times a week, and it's a very um, stress-free class where we try to educate you and inform you about Fort Hayes, about the American classroom, some of the things that you can expect as a Fort Hayes student. So we want to continue to work with you to help you learn about Fort Hayes, about what faculty expect of you in the classroom, maybe learning a little bit about managing time, also um, learning about the resources that are available on campus. We'll get, again talk about the Student Health Center, we'll talk about the Kelly Center, some of those things that we spoke about. We'll have the folks from those areas come and meet with you and talk about how they can help you be a successful student. We'll talk about American holidays, traditions, learn a little bit about the history of Fort Hayes and Kansas to help you understand about the area and the community that you're living in. One of the things I would add to that is once students um, make application and decide they're interested in Fort Hayes and they're admitted to the university, we want to start communicating with you. So we will start sending you information, we will send you pre-arrival information that will ask you to give us some, some information in regards to do you plan to live on campus so we can make sure you have a room. When are you planning to arrive to campus so we can pick you up from the Hayes Airport if you're flying into Hayes? These dates are very important because orientation is typically a week and a half before the semester starts. So the dates on your immigration documents are very important. So when you are making plans to secure your student visa and make your air, air airline reservations, that you can be here for the start of orientation because we know as students come to Hayes, they're dealing with different time zones. And so as Vivi indicated, you know, you may be traveling 20 to 24 hours. And so when you arrive in Hayes, it may be in the middle of the afternoon. But for you in your home country, it may be night. Yeah. So helping students to, again, before classes start, adjust to what we call Kansas time, so that during the day you are up, and at night you are sleeping. So it, it helps you to be more successful academically and again adjust to, to your new life in Hayes. So I think Vivi can maybe talk about some of those time challenges. Yeah, um, when I went to my orientation, uh, I was so tired. You know, um, when it's like the daytime in Hayes, it's actually the night, midnight in the, back in China. But I'm glad I did go to the orientation because I have learned so much. 
we learn like uh, about the campus police and the health center and uh, your tiger card, which is your university ID. And I still remember at that time, Karen was pregnant and she gave us a campus tool. Amazing. And she took us to the a swimming pool. At that time, um, the swimming pool does not uh, did not have any water. So, a uh, pregnant Karen, she went down to the swimming pool and just show us, okay, it's like the uh, water will be this deep, so be careful, something like that. So that that was really good memory, and I'm really confident you will learn a lot uh, from the orientation. So make sure you. Go to the orientation and all the classes. That's really good. I think that every student who arrives has a, a memory, like Vivi said. Um, you know, I remember picking students up from the airport and them um, being very surprised. Kansas is where we are somewhat flat, and so they are very surprised that they can see such a blue sky and uh, because we don't have a lot of tall buildings. So at night, they can see the stars. And so there just are a lot of things that students experience that um, coming to a new place, they may not have thought they would have experienced, um, but are memories that they take with them. Uh, and so I, I think if we asked 100 students, each of them would have one particular thing they remember when they first arrived to Hayes, whether it was a person they met, maybe it was a uh, someone walking on the sidewalk, because it's very common for people you don't know to say hello to you, good morning, smile at you. Again, a very, very friendly environment that if you were in a large city, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have that same experience. And so I, I think that students really are surprised by that, but they appreciate that warm and caring environment that they come that they come to, and they each have some memory that sticks with them that um, they can share. Even like our parents, they're in our home countries, and they feel just so so thankful to the faculties and staff at Fort Hayes, and also um, they feel very safe to send us to Fort Hayes because this community is just so friendly. As Kara said, you can see strangers walking on the street and say hello, how are you to you. And um, I still remember when I didn't have car, um, when I, um, my friend and I carried the Walmart um, bags on the, walking on the street and the one grandma just stopped, stopped to pick her car and ask, do you need a ride back to the campus? I can recognize your Fort Hayes students. So it's so sweet. Every time when I tell my parents those stories and my experience at Fort Hayes, they just feel so proud and happy for me. Do you want to tell the students all over the world about your contact with us as an undergraduate student and graduate student because you were first in them, went back and you come back again for graduate school? And what they're behind let the people know. Okay, sure. Um, well, um, my friends always uh, uh, say I'm kind of product of Fort Hayes <laughs> 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 because I came here for um, undergraduate program as a junior. That at that time I was an exchange student, so just one year, um, and then I went back to. Uh, China to finish my uh, bachelor degree. So at that time, I so, thought it's <coughs> so difficult to find another place so friendly and can give students so many sweet memories. So I decided to come back. Um, that's why I came back um, in graduate school at Fort Hayes, which is communication major. Um, I think. The professors here, um, they, they have so many activities in class, 
um, I still remember when I had the crisis management class, our professor took us to the case emergency management center, just check out all the equipment and learn their pro process to manage crisis. It's wonderful because um, not every professor can give you this opportunity to learn this much and you can really get involved in this community and have interaction with the um, American people and yeah so after graduation I stayed. <laughs> and one more thing I want to say <coughs> she said about uh, this management crisis since the city is a small city, all those centers are at the same support agency, university, and the professors, and they can go there just by phone call because we, have, we don't have so many people around. We have about a city of 20,000 people, including the students. So the thing is much handier for professors to take the students outside of campus to see different activities. Whereas this thing is going to be done in Chicago, it's going to take a different, that's a different story in that huge big city. So I just want to say the reason that professor, because it's much easier for us to reach those programs outside of campus. And Fort Hayes is a very important part of the Hayes community. And so um, as a Fort Hayes student and as a staff member, we realize that we're part of the Fort Hayes community, but we're also part of the larger Hayes community. And so um, because of that relationship, we really feel like we need to give to the community. So a lot of the students will do what's called community service. So they will go into the community and maybe they will pick up trash. Um, Vivi worked with our local rotary group. We have what's called a paint-a-thon, where we paint uh, houses for people who don't have enough money to paint the houses themselves. So we always encourage our American students, but international students as well, to get involved in these activities, to feel like they can contribute back to the Hayes community that has contributed and welcomed them. And it's also a good feeling to help somebody else who needs help, because we, we feel like as a global community, we should be helping each other. And so through community service, we really feel like that's a good way for students to give back to not only the local community, but hopefully, again, as students go out, get jobs, have their own families, they will feel like they are part of a community and as part of a community, want to help others in that community. Yeah, and for the campus of student organizations, we have Tigers in Services. Um, they have so many events. Um, you can be a volunteer, like to help the commun um, community or the campus, or even like go to other states. Um, I went to several um, trips to other states, like to help the tornado relief in Oklahoma, or um, just go to different places. And during the trip, you can see different things. Um, off campus and also you can build really a uh, good friendship with other university students most of them are americans and you can just talk to them and share even share your own culture to them it's amazing they do not know um i mean they are always willing to know other cultures um that's great you can feel like okay someone's actually listen to me and makes you even like proud of your own culture. <laughs> uh, Karen mentioned the screening process that we have at Fort Hayes State. This is done since we believe in total academic achievement for our students. We've got to be sure that the students can do a good job when they get to their major classes. Uh, for the last three years, we have started, uh, with the permission of the president of the university, we started this screening, a language screening for all international students who come to Fort Hayes. The reason was, even the students with passing 61 in TOEFL, I can myself prefer students in one month school than with every intermediate person 
in one month that person can pass TOEFL, can, can train that person to be passing the exam, the test, and get 61. But that does not prove the ability of being able to sit in academic classes and listen to academic professor. Uh, the way that they talk, the speed of the language, the lecture that they're making, the number of the vocabulary they use in one 15 minutes class, and the expectation of the writing they want from the students for different uh, aspect of writing, the strategies that they want them to read the way they want them to read, what kind of strategy should be used. Therefore, the students are screened, and some people do not need any extra English as a second language to help them to be more successful, but some students, few students may need it. So this is the one that Karen mentioned. Students are being screened uh, during the period of the orientation when they come to Cortez in two different time, in the spring semester and fall semester both. Uh, so this is, the, this is going to be done, but if you are sure about your uh, academic English ability, so there is no worry about doing a good job in the screening test. Uh, one more thing I want to mention about uh, Porto State University. Since the classes are too, classes are small, you have got a very good command of being a part of the team of any major courses that you are a part of. If you want to be in different clubs, they have different clubs in different departments. And I would like to ask Karen to talk about the fraternity that we have on campus. That that can be as a social group or, or as a, a group that can help students to improve by being among uh, different other American students, girls with girls, with sororities that we have. If you just give them some information about the fraternities and the, why we have them in American campuses, uh, that would Sure. We do have um, fraternity and sorority houses on campus and all students um, are eligible to pledge or rush to the, to the houses. It um, provides an environment for all students to, to learn together, to live together, um, to study, and to kind of experience life together. Um, we also have student organizations that act in a similar type of um, aspect where you can get involved with a group of students based on interests that you share. So if you're an accounting major, you can be part of the accounting, accounting club or the accounting student organization. Um, if you're an English major, you can be part of the English club. We have a club for international students, the International Student Association. We have a Chinese Student Association, a Saudi Arabian Culture Club. Um, and so there are over a hundred student organizations at Fort Hayde that as an international student, you can become a member uh, and join in their activities and be involved in their events. We also have an intramural club if you like to play basketball or do badminton. Maybe you like to play cards or do poker. You can do intramural games with others and really learn um, about some American culture and meet new students. We want you to take advantage of being in the United States and have fun while you're here. Um, so like Carol had mentioned, have a, a balanced life and to be healthy. Um, Vivi, could you talk about some of the student organizations you were involved in? Um, I, I was in the international student uh, yeah, organization and the Chinese one and also the honor society. Uh, tigers and so it is just a bunch of <laughs> organizations. Um, I had great time with other members in the um, clubs or organizations. How about your trip to Wichita? Oh, um, you from with other international students? Yes, no, with the, with the club with the uh, Tiger in the Circus. <laughs> we just went to um, went to Wichita, another. Um, bigger city in Kansas, it's three hours away. Um, we went there and helped um, those homeless persons <coughs> um, to clean the, the church. It's kind of like a church to, for them to stay, to clean 
of those stuff and also to organize those donations. We spent one day down there and yeah, we had fun, although it's super tired. <laughs> you you were working the whole day. <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome. Um, I hope all the international students can take advantage of those um, on student organizations. Um, they have lots of uh, activities and you can meet someone that have the same like habits of uh, uh, <laughs> with you, just it's good good place to learn something and make friends. I would like to say we we strongly recommend that um, students live on campus because um, living on campus typically there there are different styles of housing on campus. There's the traditional what we call dormitory room where two students share a room. There is a a, a common bathroom, a common. Um, area and then there's the cafeteria that the students can go to to eat lunch, dinner, and supper so they don't have to worry about cooking. Um, there are some on-campus apartments so there uh, are a variety of different living options which again we encourage students to, to live on campus just because since Hayes is a small community we don't have a lot of public transportation but the university does provide what we call Tiger Transport which is a, uh, a van service or shuttle service from campus to the mall um, and then to Walmart. And it runs uh, on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays um, for several hours on those respective days. It's free for students. So uh, again, it's a great way for students to be able to get off campus. So as Bibby said, they don't have to walk and carry their bags. They can take the, the bus to, again, the mall or to Walmart to buy the things they need. Um, we also have a, a shopping area that is relatively close to campus that students can walk downtown. There is uh, an Asian market that um, students, if they want to do some cooking, because the resident halls do have some small kitchenettes, that if students are hungry for some traditional food, yeah. They can they can cook, uh, and it's a great way for the international students to share their culture and food with American students because Americans are always interested in different foods, um, and so it's a great way to 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 create a dialogue and to share um, culture. Yeah, we're talking about friends and family. Okay. Yeah, um, for for students who are interested in um, having a um, relationship with an American family, we have a friendship family program. It's not a homestay program, it's, it's a friendship program where we have um, families in the community. They may be um, young couples with children, they may be uh, grandmothers. There, there's a variety of different ways that the community members can uh, be involved in friendship family. But basically we match uh, international students from Fort Hayes with an American family. And so these students and their friendship family, maybe they have a meal together once a month. Um, sometimes they may go to an athletic event. Um, they may, um, at Halloween, because it's an American holiday, carve jack-o'-lanterns or pumpkins. Um, the young children trick or treat to the houses. Again, a very American culture thing that they share with their friendship family student. And again, Vivi, um, has been involved with the Friendship Family Program. Um, and I think for students who, um, you know, maybe miss their families at home, it gives them a connection to, again, the Hayes community, that again, they're not living with the family, but it's just someone they can call if they got an A on a test and share that with their family. Um, maybe they want to go have a meal with the family. Um, and again, it's, it's really based on both the student and the family schedule because the families know the students are busy with studying at times. The students know maybe the families are busy. So really, they, they work together to find a convenient time to share time together. And again, in a friendship relationship. There's another program we have on campus called Community Connections that started back in 2006 and we've been having it for the last Years. Yeah. So seven years actually, and uh, the students, mostly international students, are being invited to different gatherings with the uh, Hayes community. So they talk, it's good for them, like speaking, listening especially, 
different uh, holidays that we have. We are gathered together. They talk. They enjoy their uh, culture. They talk about their culture and they speak English. And the people who are there, they really want to get to know you. The Hayes community wants to know you, wants, wants to know who you are, what culture you're from, and uh, they want to upgrade their knowledge about different parts of the world. And in this way, you can share your uh, culture with us, with the uh, people in the community. So this, uh, this community connection that we have, it, uh, I think it's going to happen probably two or, two or three times a semester, uh, would really help you involved in the community. Last thing I want to say for ESL program, it can be online, www.fhsu.edu slash ESL. All the information about the program, the sessions when we start, and the deadlines, application deadlines, when the classes start, when the tests are taking place, everything is online. You can check it out and you can apply. But in that more important things when you apply you got to be careful what documents to send i would like to ask carol to talk about the documents that jackie maxwell needs what they could be for them to apply yeah and again um the application for all of the programs undergraduate graduate esl are online and um they're really we hope user friendly for you to be able to to access um, there is the, the application. Um, if you're applying for ESL, you submit the application, you get admitted for the ESL program. If you are applying and maybe you're going to do ESL first and then go to an undergraduate program, the um, one application will serve for both of those programs. Okay, And so to apply, you would need the application. Um, again, a, a language score if you take a TOEFL IELTS or a program. Or, um, you know, for some countries, if English is the native language, you may not be required to provide a language score. A financial statement, because as Karen mentioned, um, you need to be able to provide proof to not only Fort Hayes that you can afford to study in the U.S., but when you go for your student visa, that's something that the consulate will want to know as well is, if you're going to go to America, how will you pay for your education? So it's very important to, to know because every school has a different financial amount that you would be required to provide proof of. For an undergraduate student at Fort Hayes, it's approximately uh, $21,000 for tuition, housing, health insurance, um, uh, all of the expenses. We try to make it as comprehensive as we can so students know what to expect so they're not surprised when they get to campus and they think, oh, I thought I only had to pay $10,000 because that's what your, your, uh, your application said. And that may have only been for tuition. It may not have included what housing was going to cost. So we want students to really have a full picture of what a year may cost them. It may not cost you that entire amount because it would depend on the number of credit hours you take, where you live. But again, we want students to have an idea of what, what the cost will be. And then, again, as Karen said, you would need to be able to provide proof, whether it's maybe a high school diploma, if you, ha if, um, you have studied someplace else, transcripts. Uh, and all of those things would be required for the undergraduate degree program. If you're wanting to apply to graduate school, again, the application is online. Um, and depending on the program that you are interested in applying for, they may require students to have a, a GRE score. Or maybe if you're going to apply for the MBA program, you would need a GMAT score. Again, it's so the, the graduate school website is very comprehensive in regards to the majors and what the specific requirements are for those. Again, for graduate school, there's the application. Students must have a personal financial statement a personal statement of why you're picking the major. You have to have references. Um, and again, depending on um, if you have, are required to have a GMAT GRE, what the score is. Transcripts, and again, proof that you have a bachelor's degree already. And obviously, um, the language proficiency as well. So all of those documents are collected. And once the application is complete, 
you will get your immigration document, which is typically an I-20 with an admission letter. And again, that's when we will start communicating with you, giving you pre-arrival information, information you need to know to take care of housing. Um, and then if you have specific questions, it provides you the contact at Fort Hayes to be able to start communicating with. Because we really want to make sure that we can answer all of students' questions before they come. So again, they're not surprised. I want to uh, point out one thing. Fort Hayes is a really affordable um, university compared to other public education institutions in Midwestern America. Fort Hayes has really low tuition fees, so um, that is really good for international students. And you can find all the information like the tuition fee and the admission requirements on Fort Hayes website. Um, or you can talk to our university representatives online or email us. <laughs> And, and typically one of the, the questions students may have is, are there scholarships available for international students? And um, we don't have a lot of international scholarship money um, that is available for students. So um, as Vivi mentioned, the, the tuition at Fort Hayes is very affordable. Um, we know that obviously scholarship money um, is helpful for students. And so it's, it's just best to, when you um, apply, to inquire about that. And then we can direct you if there are departmental scholarships that students may be eligible for. Or again, as a graduate student, um, there, there may be some uh, community scholarships that may be available. Yeah, and a graduate uh, assistantship. You can work, and even for other students, you can, as international students, you can work on campus up to 20 hours a week. So you have opportunities to work. Um, but I believe since we have so um, affordable tuition, it won't be a big problem for international students. But if you have any question, just ask us. Yeah, and, and again, kind of to, to wrap up, um, you know, we, uh, I think anyone at Fort Hayes who you can make a contact with is more than happy to answer any question you have. We hope that um, you can see that not only the Fort Hayes campus, but again, the Hayes community really is very welcoming and really um, sees the, the value and importance of having you as an international student on our campus. And so we'd encourage you to, to check out the website, to check out Fort Hayes, to, uh, to Google Hayes, Kansas, to find out more about not only Hayes, Kansas, but maybe Kansas in general. And then if you have specific questions, um, please ask, and we'll be more than happy to try to answer those for you so that you can feel comfortable with your decision um, if you choose to come to Fort Hayes. Uh, to put everything in a nutshell, for you, it's affordability that she mentioned, plus small classroom sizes that we have, and friendly faculty and staff at Fort Hayes State University make this place a suitable place to study. We thank you for joining us today. And again, if um, you have any questions, please don't hesitate to, to find us uh, on the web at www.fhsu.edu. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.